Welcome back to Will's Recaps. Today we're delving into the enthralling drama action film, Warriors of the Rainbow, Cedic Bale. This cinematic masterpiece follows the journey of a courageous warrior from a small village, tasked with defending their ancestral land against the formidable Japanese army's attempts to seize it. Their resistance is unwavering, extending to the very last drop of blood shed in defense of their home. Their bravery is truly commendable. The story parallels the contemporary struggles of indigenous communities, reminiscent of the ongoing challenges faced by the Kukis, whose lands are under threat from governmental encroachment. With their livelihood intricately tied to the forest they inhabit, these tribes adamantly refuse to relinquish their territory to the intruder. Let's get into the story. The film starts with a hunt near a mountain stream in Taiwan. Three Bunun men are quietly hunting a wild pig. When they attempt to shoot it with an arrow, a gang led by young Muna Rudao of the Sidiq tribe unexpectedly attacks the Bunun men. This gives them a chance to escape from the river and find a hiding spot. Shockingly, Muna Rudao trespasses into the territory to hunt animals for food. Later, Muna forcefully urges his companions and swims in the river. He swiftly crosses the river and catches a Bunan man, brutally ending his life. <laughs> then he seizes the boar. Suddenly, his group shouts, warning that Bunan from the Entaban clan are approaching. As a result, Muna quickly runs away to escape. Regrettably, Muna is unable to bring the boar with him and duck in. Eventually, Muna and his clan come back to the village, where the villagers warmly greet them. Afterwards, Muna undergoes a ritual where he receives tattoo marks of manhood on his face. This symbolizes his sacrifice of blood to the spirits of their ancestors. As a result, Muna gains the capability to protect their clan and hunting areas. The Rainbow Bridge symbolizes the place where their ancestor spirits await the brave soul of Muna. In 1895, China harshly gave up control of Taiwan to Japan under the Treaty of Shimonoseki between Japan and China. This marks the end of the Japanese invasion of Taiwan, with Japan overcoming resistance from the Han Chinese. Consequently, Taiwan becomes a new territory of Japan's empire and is still awaiting acknowledgement from the Mikado. Yet there's a looming threat from the fierce islanders of Taiwan who claim they're ready to fight the Japanese invaders. As tensions rise, the Japanese hold a meeting to strategize their next move on Taiwan. They plan to use force to sweep the entire island once they arrive at Keelung Port. However, General Yahiko Kamada opposes this approach. He believes it's crucial to avoid provoking the islanders and instead gain their full loyalty to the Japanese empire. The Japanese military officials view the natives, especially the tribal people, as standing in the way of Taiwan's abundant resources. Meanwhile, Muna Rudao goes hunting with his father. While hunting in the forest, Muna is tasked with catching a deer for his upcoming wedding. Meanwhile, the native people of Taiwan launch a surprise attack on a group of Japanese soldiers, armed only with close combat weapons against their enemy's guns. In the midst of this, Muna skillfully takes down the deer. His tribe, the Mahebu clan, joyously celebrates his wedding. The next day, Muna heads down the mountain to trade with Han Chinese. Suddenly, one of his companions calls out, pointing to the arrival of the Sidic people from the Tota group in the village. Muna hesitantly taunts the Tota group before departing. Angered by this, Temu Walis, a young man from the Tota group, suddenly confronts Muna, declaring he shouldn't be so arrogant because he's not afraid of him. Thankfully, Muna refrains from attacking Temu and departs the village with his group. The next day, while the Japanese rest in the woods before continuing their mission, Muna unexpectedly starts shooting at one of the Japanese soldiers. In response, Japanese General Oshima commands that all trading between the Hans and the Wuxie tribe, where Muna's camp is located, be prohibited. Later, different clans ambush the Japanese soldiers as they pass through the cliff trail, sparking a fierce battle between the Japanese and the native people, including Muna and the Mahebu clan. Ultimately, Rudao Luhe, Muna's father, leads the attack. He aggressively cuts the ropes holding up large rocks, causing them to crush the Japanese soldiers. Meanwhile, General Oshima strikes a deal with a group of Bunan, ordering them to intoxicate Muna's men by trading them wine. Later that night, the Bunun men awaken their chief to commence their mission. The chief then launches an ambush on the Mahibu clan while they sleep. He specifically targets Muna, aiming to kill him. However, Muna reacts swiftly to dodge the chief's sword. Despite being intoxicated, Muna bravely fights against the Bunan chief, urging his men to wake up. 
He warns them that the Boonin from the Kentabang clan are on a headhunt history, urging everyone to flee before they all perish. After their escape, the Mahibu clan hurriedly returns to their village to prepare for battle. Meanwhile, Japanese soldiers are already advancing into the woods, where Muna manages to shoot one of them with an arrow. This triggers an intense battle with the Japanese soldiers swiftly invading nearby villages. However, some Japanese remain in the woods to continue fighting against Muna and his group. Unfortunately, the Mahibu village and its neighboring villages swiftly fall under Japanese control. Meanwhile, Rudao Luhe is suddenly injured by an explosion caused by Japanese soldiers. This forces Muna to retreat, carrying his wounded father to safety. Upon their return, they are shocked to find that the Japanese have taken over their village. Later on, the Mahibu and other villages are compelled to abandon the tradition of keeping the heads they've hunted. This angers Muna, leading him to impulsively attack a Japanese soldier. Twenty years later, the native men of Taiwan find themselves forced into low-paying logging jobs in the forest. Sadly, significant changes have occurred on the island of Taiwan under Japanese rule, affecting the indigenous people's way of life. The Wuxie tribe is now forbidden from carrying their own guns and is compelled to cease their traditional hunting practices, both of animals and humans. As a result, Japanese officials take credit for transforming what they view as a primitive territory into a more civilized one. In one incident, a Han man who owns a grocery store pressures the native men into accepting wine, despite knowing they cannot afford it. He then proceeds to give one of them a massage. However, a Japanese police officer named Hanaoka Jiro intervenes, admonishing them for spending their meager wages on alcohol. This angers the native men, who mock Hanaoka for being subservient to the Japanese. At the same time, indigenous women begin working in Japanese households, serving the colonizers. Sadly, this means they must abandon their traditional weaving practices. Meanwhile, children like Pawan Nawi start going to school in Wuxia village, where they are taught by Hanaoka, a Sidiq policeman who has adopted the Japanese way of life. Suddenly, while the native men are hard at work cutting trees during the rainy season, a rainbow appears in the sky. This prompts them to start chanting their traditional song, the Sidiq Bale. In the late autumn of 1930, the village of Muna prepares for a wedding celebration for a young couple. Some of the young native men borrow guns from Japanese soldiers as part of their preparations. Among them, Tado and Basso are questioned by a police officer about their father, Muna, and his hunting attempts. Tado explains that there's nothing left to hunt because the Japanese have cut down all the trees in their hunting grounds. He warns that if they don't go hunting soon, there may be nothing left once the forest is completely cleared. Meanwhile, Muna quietly goes hunting for the wedding ceremony. Suddenly, he spots Pawan catching a boar in the river. While observing Pawan with the boar, Muna and his group hear a gunshot from the forest. They quickly rush to investigate and discover that Temu Wallace and his group are also hunting nearby. This angers Muna, and he and Temu begin arguing over the hunting territory. <coughs> Suddenly, Kojima Genji appears and explains that Temu is only teaching his son to hunt. Later on, the Mahibu clan begins the wedding celebration, and Muna's sons are allowed to slaughter a cow for the feast. Amidst the celebration, a newly assigned and anxious Japanese policeman named Yoshimura unexpectedly arrives to inspect their village. Toto respectfully offers his homemade millet wine to Yoshimura, but Yoshimura declines, stating he won't drink Tato's fermented wine because it contains saliva and he views it as unsanitary. While refusing Tato's offer, Yoshimura pushes him away, noticing that Tato's hand is stained with blood from slaughtering an animal, which further deters him from drinking Tato's wine. Following this, Yoshimura notices blood on his uniform, which prompts him to violently beat Tato several times. In response, Tato fights back, and his younger brother Basso joins in, also attacking Yoshimura. Startled by the commotion, Muna rushes to the scene and intervenes, putting an end to the fight. He then allows Yoshimura to leave their village. However, Yoshimura becomes fearful for his safety and threatens to punish the entire village for the altercation. In response, Tato urges his father to prepare for a confrontation, but Muna scolds him for provoking Yoshimura. Later on, Muna takes his sons to the police station in an attempt to reconcile with Yoshimura and mend relations. However, Yoshimura refuses to forgive them, stating that he has already reported the incident of them assaulting a police officer. 
Later that night, Tado, Basso, and the young Sidic men realize the injustice of collective punishment when one individual from their tribe makes a mistake with the Japanese. As a result, they resolve to fight and die with honor rather than live in shame. Piho Sapo from Hogo Village suggests taking action by killing the Japanese soldiers on October 27th. The next day, Tado, Basso, and their friends approach Muna, urging him to initiate a conflict with the Japanese. While they plead with him, Basso urges his father to demonstrate their resolve. Muna, realizing the inevitability of war, draws strength from Temu's father's wisdom to protect and preserve the Sadiq people. Despite acknowledging the daunting odds, Muna decides to fight. He instructs the young men to inform the chiefs of the 12 native clans about the planned attack. Muna declares that they will gather in Wuxi to offer a blood sacrifice the following morning. They plan to launch their attack on the day of the Japanese sports event, knowing that all the Japanese soldiers will be concentrated in the schoolyard of the Wuxi village. Meanwhile, Hanaoka, now a police officer, becomes aware that Muna is preparing for war. He rushes to the Mahebu village and finds Muna cleaning his sword inside his house. Hanaoka attempts to convince Muna to reconsider starting the war. However, Tado and his group enter Muna's home and attack Hanaoka with a sword. Muna intervenes and stops his son, engaging in a conversation with Hanaoka. Despite Hanaoka's efforts to persuade them against fighting the Japanese, Muna feels compelled to force Hanaoka to join their cause to prove his loyalty to the Sidiq people. They resolve to fight and uphold their honor rather than live in disgrace. After Hanaoka departs, Muna discovers that only six of the native clans are willing to join their cause. Determined, he ascends to the mountaintop to call upon their ancestors by singing with his father's spirit. Muna's ritual serves as a signal marking the start of the war. On the night before the battle, Muna's daughter, Mahung Mona, attempts to seduce her husband, which would violate tribal rules and prevent him from joining the fight. However, her efforts fail. Mahung reveals that she is aware of the preparations for battle, but her husband refuses to listen, leaving her saddened. Later, the natives led by Tado launch covert attacks on the police outposts. Muna then gathers young men from village to village, rallying them for the upcoming conflict. Upon reaching Mahibu, Muna instructs Tana to divide their forces into two teams. One team, led by Tana, will target police stations to disrupt Japanese communication in the east. The other team will accompany Muna to the Gungu clan to rendezvous with the rest of the group. Finally, Muna successfully persuades the last chief, Tadao Nogan of Hogo Village, to join the battle. Despite realizing the likelihood of their deaths, Muna chooses to fight to uphold the pride of their ancestors. The next day, Muna speaks to his young men, emphasizing that only those who have shed blood can enter the land of their ancestors and claim to be true CD warriors. The CD men massacring all Japanese men, women, and children on the day of the sports event. Fortunately, Hanaoka saves his family by covering them with native cloth. The Siddiq men attack the police station and seize the guns stored inside. Meanwhile, Tadao's daughter, Obe, manages to spare her life by hiding in a storage room, disguised in Japanese clothing. However, one Japanese police officer manages to escape. During the attack, Pawan and other boys join in by killing their abusive Japanese teacher and his family. After the violent encounter, Muna sits amidst the schoolyard strewn with corpses. Hope you like this amazing movie. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.